Good morning, football, and happy Monday. Thanks for choosing us. We've got some headlines for you, and we start with the Cowboys. Coach Mike McCarthy spoke over the weekend. He was asked if he expects quarterback Dak Prescott to be back in time for training camp. Yeah, I, I have no reason not to think that. And, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, this week in phase two will be a will be a big, will be a nice step in that direction. I, I think he'll do most things. I mean, we're, we're, you know, there's a there's a plan in place that's coordinated with uh, with Britt and, and Jim in the training room. And so uh, but I know he feels he feels really good. He's 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 really um, has had some excellent workouts uh, here the last couple of weeks. So but I, I see him doing most of the work. Well, we have the perfect person to talk Cowboys. I would say Jane Slater's addiction is the Cowboys. So let's get to it with something we are calling Jane Says. Some say Jane says I'm done with Sergio. What say you, Jane, about Mike McCarthy saying that Dak Prescott is expected to be ready for training camp? It actually is a great song, isn't it? Always been a fan. Listen, I've got a lot of concerns about the Cowboys heading into the season, but Dak Prescott is actually not one of them. Everyone I've talked to said that he has been in the facility nearly every single day. He's mobile. He's out and about. What was intriguing about this, and Schrager, I'm, heard, I'm sure you heard a little bit of this leading up to uh, you know, the signing of Dak to the long-term deal. There was all of this buzz that he had this second surgery and that he pushed his recovery too much and there might be concerns about the ankle. There's been no talk of that. Everyone that I've talked to ever since he signed the deal, so maybe that was just the buzz that happens as you're trying to get one of these long-term deals done, has been that they have no concerns about what he's able to do. In other, in other words, he's able to play on the foot. He's able to step back. He's been throwing fine. And you heard Mike McCarthy saying it there. They expect him to do even more in phase two. I'm concerned about the offensive line in Dallas. I'm concerned about this defense. But Dak Prescott, his mentality to get back on the field and even the work that he's put in and all of the reports I've heard about his health so far, I've had no indication to worry about him and whether he'll be able to play next season and whether he'll be able to play well. Yeah, no doubt, Jane. Everybody in the NFL is, is rooting for Dak uh, to come back. Uh, the, the Cowboys definitely are a different team with him on the field. Let's talk about Gil Brandt real quick, uh, somebody I know you know very well and somebody who knows the NFL inside and out. Here are his – he created an article. It's out on NFL.com right now. You can go on and click on it. He ranked eight rookies who he believes are in the best position to succeed – in 2021 he has cowboys linebacker micah parsons listed at number seven so the gill father says parsons is in one of the best positions to succeed as a rookie jane what do you say well i say that gill brand is one of the more fascinating guys i've ever met i think he finally just got a flip phone before you'd have to actually have to call his landline and leave a message on his answering machine at home to get a hold of him, so I was nice. always entertained by that. Uh, but his read on, on Micah Parsons, I think as it relates to the position, is is a good one. I mean, I think the big thing with Micah is, you know, he hasn't played football in a year, uh, but if you talk to this guy, there was no one that wanted to be a Dallas Cowboys player more than this one. Uh, he talked about as he left, you know, the Cotton Bowl game at AT&T Stadium, he hoped he was able to put on the blue and white. There you see his enthusiasm. I've never seen a more confident guy on the podium calling Jerry Jones my man when I asked him a question about some of the off the field concerns. He said, my man wouldn't have brought me in if he didn't trust me. So there's a swag about him, but I also think there's not as much of an emphasis on whether a linebacker is going to succeed or not. I mean, we're going to be talking about is Trevor Lawrence going to succeed? Is Travis, uh, is, is Wilson, Zach Wilson going to succeed? But in terms of Micah Parsons, I think the biggest question is, will the defense put him in a position to succeed? I think that's my biggest question. We didn't get a lot from this coaching staff last season. I reported that the players just didn't feel like they were teaching well, coaching well. The players weren't responding uh, to some of the nuances of this defense. But I think that what stands out to me about Dan Quinn is he has a very clear vision for what he wants from this group. And so I think sky's the limit for, for these guys. I like some of the swag and some of the talent that they've brought in. It's can they put it all together. And if this team could just get a middle-of-the-pack defense – I think that this team could be something special. We certainly saw that in 2016 when it was a middle pack defense and we had Dak Prescott and, and Ezekiel Elliott firing on all cylinders. Jane, loving having you on the show because of your expertise with the Cowboys and so many other teams around the league, but also for my opportunity to go down a Jane's Addiction wormhole. I was a huge Jane's Addiction fan. 
Uh, I would put Ritual, De Lo Habitual as up there, right up there with Nevermind from Nirvana or any of the Foo Fighter <laughs> albums that Kyle Brandt sings in his sleep. Um, uh, Jane, yes. let's ask about some, the sore spot, the unit of the defense. You mentioned it right there. You said it's going to be middle of the pack. That might not be good enough. So I'm going to ask you straight up, with Dan Quinn, with all these young defensive rookies, is the Cowboys uh, Achilles heel going to be that defense or are they going to be able to find a way to overcome just how sore that spot was last year? Yeah, attitude is not going to be an issue for this team. You know, it's funny. A lot of us beat reporters have kicked around like who are the leaders in this locker room? It just didn't feel like they had at times the right guys on the defensive side of the ball. And then a lot of times the right guys were injured. So they've brought in a lot of new faces. When, even when I look at this roster – I'm going to be learning a lot of new names this year because when you look at some of the guys they they decided not to resign, guys they lost in free agency and all of the rookies and the attention to defense and the draft, uh, it's a completely new group. But maybe that's good because they're more moldable, they're more pliable. And what I love about this notion of Dan Quinn, I, I talked about earlier, he seems to have had a much clearer vision for what this defense is going to look like, very similar to what we saw with the Seahawks and the Legion of Boom. And he brought in a lot of similar players, guys like Nashawn Wright in these corners that are lengthy and big. Uh, and then speed was the other thing that really stood out. But like, for me, the altitude, uh, attitude, not an issue. I, I think this is a, a confident swaggy group, but I think their altitude is ultimately going to depend on this coaching staff. Are they going to put them in the best position to succeed? Because I truly felt like that is what held them back last year. And I got the sense that the Cowboys and the front office thought the same thing because that's why they said goodbye to Mike Nolan and Jim Tom Sula. We've never really seen the Cowboys yeah. say goodbye to a coaching to coaches after one season, we've seen them relegated to different roles, but not a full on see you later. We're bringing in some new guys like they did this season. Oof, 28th ranked scoring defense in the NFL last season. Shouldn't take much to improve upon that. One last one for you, Jane. Give me the temperature of this fan base. All 32 squads, obviously full of optimism and hope, but there's different expectations always with the Cowboys. And now that Dak is back and paid, what's the fan base feeling like? I think you hit the, the nail on the head when you said Dak. I think the minute they signed Dak, uh, the expectations and the energy for this fan base were at an all-time high. If the Cowboys weren't able to get this thing done, I think you would have seen uh, the pain is one of the favorite words that the fan base likes to use around here. They know nothing but pain. <laughs> if they could... It's, it was the offensive line. I mean, that the Great Wall of Dallas fell apart. So that's going to be a big question mark for me. It seems like they're okay with it, though, okay, because they didn't really address the offensive line until what was the eighth or ninth pick when they went out and got Josh Bell, the, uh, the tackle out of uh, uh, help me out with the Shregs. He was at Florida State. Marshall. Uh, until they addressed uh, Josh Bell. So they, they clearly felt good enough about Lael Collins and Tyron Smith's uh, health. But that to me, and then I think Ezekiel Elliott, he's been putting in the work this offseason. Fans love to see that because Zeke Dude. took... Zeke took a lot of hits last year from the fan base because of some uncharacteristic drops. And I just think he was asked to do a lot because of the offensive line. And then I think just seeing this defense and even seeing a guy like Dan Quinn out there and mixing it up, it was uh, it, it was one of the players, Keanu Neal, who said the one thing that stood out about Dan Quinn is he'll mix it up in his J's with you. So just seeing some of the video mm. practice this week with rookie minicamp where he's out there physically working with a lot of these defensive players, it just brings a different energy. And I think that's ultimately what this team needed. They need needed Dak back, they needed his leadership, and then they also needed, I just think, some fresh faces on defense and a, and a new coach and a new message. I love that. And yeah, I love that you mentioned Zeke. A lot of pressure on him to perform and get back to being one of the best backs in the game, let alone in that division.